welcome to Pet Pals. I'm your host, Patty Sarkady. Today on this episode, we have the Hinsdale Humane Society joining us. And with us is our medical director from the Hinsdale Humane Society, Dr. Tverdik. Fantastic. Oh, I'm Good so job. glad that you're here. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank but you people at Hinsdale Humane Society known you as Dr. Kristen. Yes, and because so, that last name is a, is a tough one. It's, <laughs> it's great. What I want to know is how long have you been there and what's your background and how long have you been treating the animals? Absolutely. Um, so I've been with Hinsdale Humane Society pretty much since we moved to our new facility and that is at 21 Salt Creek Lane. Um, in, in early 2019 I started. So it's coming up on two and a half, three years now. Um, so I've been really excited to be back because I was actually the intern there, um, animal care intern when I was 19. So many moons ago, I won't say how many. Um, but, and then I came back as an adoption counselor, animal, animal care person throughout the summers when I was away at school. Uh, went to vet school because I loved my experience at the Humane Society so much. And then came back and was a vet in the Quad Cities and then I was at a spay neuter clinic in Indiana, and then came back to join Hinsdale Humane Society in 2019. I'm sure that they are very happy to have you there. There are how many animals do you typically treat a day? So we usually do around 20 to 30 spays and neuters a day, um, and that's with my team of one technician and uh, assistant that work with me, Fred and Patty. Shout out to Fred and Patty. And then um, we actually take care of all the other animals, anyone that became sick during the day, um, that needs medication or an exam. And then we also do a full exam on every adoptable pet so that adopters know everything that they're gonna know about the pet before they take them home and there aren't any medical surprises once they get them home into their vet. Are a lot of the animals that you see, do they come in with medical situations? Well, we actually have a few here today that do have some specific medical concerns that we took care of. Most of them um, just require a basic exam. About 70% of them require spay and neuter. So about 30% of them come in already spayed and neutered, but we do perform the surgery on all those other ones before they go up for adoption. So those are our primary focuses. We have some special procedures that we do, but primarily spay and neuter. Wow, well, we're really happy to see the animals. Um, we're looking forward to getting them on the set. And who are we starting with first? We're gonna start with Ozzy. Um, he's a little 10 year old uh, small breed dog. So he's a really cute boy. We're excited to have him here. Great, so stick around, wait, uh, come back and we will be here with our first animal for adoption. Hi, welcome back. We have our first animal up for adoption. Dr. Kristen is introducing Ozzy to us. Yeah, this is Ozzy. He's actually 10 years old. He was, <laughs> he's a little scared of the cameras. Um, he was an owner surrender. So he's, he's pretty new to us. So that might also be why he's a little bit confused. Sometimes the owner surrender animals are looking for their, their parents again, um, which is very sad, but we try to give them as much love as we can while we have them with us and make them feel comfortable. And he's 10. Yes, he is 10 years old. His owner actually passed away. And unfortunately there was no one else that was able to care for him and their family. Um, but she took such good care of him. Um, she had all of his vaccines and his, met, um, his heartworm testing done. Um, the only big thing we want to do with him is make sure he gets a dental cleaning. He has pretty significant dental disease, um, which is, as I'm sure you smell a little bit, it's not very pleasant <laughs> for people nearby him. Um, so we're getting him his dental cleaning next week. But the big, biggest reason to do that is for his health. Um, we want to make sure that he stays healthy and T dental disease can cause a lot of ill effects with the rest of the body too. And so for current dog owners and uh, people that are going to adopt a dog, how often should we be brushing their teeth? So if you're able to brush your dog's teeth, that's fantastic. That's really the only way you can prevent tartar from building up. Um, once the tartar's on there, it has to be cleaned under anesthesia and that's kind of dependent on the breed. Smaller breed dogs like Ozzy here, tend to get a lot more plaque on their teeth very quickly, so they require cleanings more often, whereas large breed dogs might never need a dental cleaning just because of the way their mouth is formed. Um, but if you're able to brush their teeth, you know, once, twice a week, even every day, is fantastic. Um, some of them just don't tolerate it very well, but it's a fantastic thing to do and get started when they're young to make sure that they feel comfortable and kind of grow up having that done. And how about, how are you doing, Ozzy? Are you ready for a new himself. home? Yes, he, Ozzy's ready for a new house. Um, he is a fantastic little dog. Again, we're taking care of his dental cleaning before he gets, um, before he gets officially adopted. Um, but we are gonna have him available for foster to adopt. So you can come and get him and then we'll just have you go to his dental appointment 
and he'll be ready to go after that. So, How is Ozzy with other dogs? How is he on a walk? He's a little bit newer with us, so we don't know about other animals at this point, but walking, he's a fantastic boy. Um, he's really good on, on the leash. Um, as, as the older pets tend to be, you know, some of the training is already done for you, so that's really nice. Um, so I'm always a fan of the seniors and getting them, getting them great homes because they come with so much love and so much wisdom. <laughs> if you are interested in adopting Ozzy, you can check uh, the screen and you'll see the phone number to the Hinsdale Humane Society. As you can see, Ozzy's kind of just chilling. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, and look, what about, um, now see, I don't know, it depends on if you are um, someone who allows the dog to be on the furniture or someone who does not, but I would imagine Ozzy would be a great lap dog to cuddle oh, up yeah. with. As you can see, he's got his paws crossed, he's ready to, ready to snuggle with you on the couch for sure. He's, he's such a sweetheart. And so if we want to adapt Ozzy, what do we have to do? So you'll just actually come to our facility during our open hours, which are all on our website. And you just uh, sign, up, sign up at the front desk, fill out your adoption application, and they will get you with a counselor and make sure it's the perfect fit for your family. We want to make sure we make lasting fits. He's so happy. He is Look a good boy. Look how happy he is. <laughs> All right, we are getting ready to find one of your friends. One of your friends is going to come on the set next. So if you wouldn't mind standing by, we'll be back momentarily with another adoptee. Hi, welcome back to Pet Pals. We are here with Peace from the Hinsdale Humane Society and our medical director from Hinsdale Humane Society, Dr. Kristen, is here to talk a little bit about peace. And as you can see, we're on the floor. <laughs> yeah, she decided she didn't want to be on the table, which we understand, she's a bigger doggy. Um, so peace is a four-year-old pit bull mix. She is actually from Texas as well, our partner's there. Uh, so she came up on transport. We actually selected her specifically because she has heartworm. Um, and we know that it is difficult for them to get them adopted um, down there and get treated because it is a costly treatment um, and they already have so many animals looking for homes. So we actually accepted her and three other dogs um, from the same facility um, that had heartworm disease, brought them up here and started their treatment. And during our break, we were talking about the importance of treating heartworm, having heartworm prevention. Yes. And so what that looks like to dog, current dog owners and those that are looking to adopt and take care of a dog and have a pet in their home. So what are the steps and how do we help prevention of that? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And it's so, so important and it's something a lot of people miss. So um, that's probably the number one thing we talk about with adopters and make sure that they're on and that they aren't aware of. Um, so heartworm is actually transmitted by mosquitoes. So an infected mosquito bites, uh, bites your dog. So it's bitten another dog that has heartworm disease and it, it, it probably bit peace here. Um, and then it transforms into adult heartworms in the bloodstream that settle in the heart and lungs. Um, so we want to prevent that, obviously. It's a very serious, complicated disease to treat, very expensive to treat. It's around $1,000 or so um, between all of the treatments and testing. Um, whereas you can prevent it, like you mentioned, with a monthly pill. You just give it to them every month. It prevents intestinal parasites as well. And it also prevents them from getting heartworm disease and developing adult heartworms. Um, so instead of, you know, we, can, we have our low cost clinic where you can purchase a year's worth of heartworm prevention for $80. So if you can imagine, $80 is going to be much, much cheaper for you than spending $1,000 on treatment if they do become positive. And then on top of that, um, you know, we have the health benefits of keeping your pets safe too. So, and keeping them from going through that, that treatment. It's actually a set of injections in their back. So we actually gave Peace her first injection a week ago. Um, and so she had an injection there, pretty uncomfortable, um, but it's obviously necessary for their health. And as you can see, it hasn't affected yes, her much. Yes, she's great. <laughs> and what type of um, energy level does Peace have for those at home who are looking to adapt? Peace is definitely high energy typically. She's kind of worn out now. Again, I think a lot of it is from her treatment. Once she gets through her treatment and all the heartworms are no longer in her system, I think you'll see a lot of that energy and puppiness return. She's four, so she's kind of settling down, um, but she's definitely going to be a high energy breed. Um, 
She is a little bit reactive around other dogs and cats, so we would probably recommend her for a, a single pet home. But otherwise, she's a fantastic like, family dog. She's really great with all people and meeting everybody. Oh, that's wonderful. We're so happy you brought her on the show with us. If you're interested in adopting peace, please take a look at the Hinsdale Humane Society website. Take a look at the phone number that you see on the screen, and we hope to hear from you. Please stay tuned because we have some more animals for you to take a look at. Hi, welcome back to Pet Pals. We have two cats here from the Hinsdale Humane Society. Dr. Kristen's gonna tell a little bit about them. Yeah, this is actually, um, this is Ginger, he's a boy, and this is Pearl, she's a girl. And we actually have their litter mates here in the carrier as well. We have Coco Bear and Billy. Um, so there are two girls and two boys in this litter. Um, they actually came from CACC, which is Chicago Animal Care and Control one of our local partners that um, we try to help out and get some animals out of their care um, since they have so many in their care. Um, so we took them about four weeks ago. They were six weeks old with their mom. And so their mom, Apple, got adopted already. So that's, we always love when the moms go home first. Um, and then we got their kittens in when they were, her kittens in when they were old enough. And we were able to get them spayed and neutered and they are ready for adoption now. Now, I noticed that um, Ginger has some nice claws on him. Yes. <laughs> so I know there was a time when we were, uh, you know, encouraged to declaw our cats. And so what is, what is the take on that now? Yeah, and again, it um, it's really comes down to education because like you said, it used to be you took your cat for spay neuter, um, you got them declawed at the same time because it was convenient for people. Um, and so unfortunately what we've learned is what's convenient for people isn't always what's best or convenient for the animals. Um, we actually have a kitty coming up in our next little segment here um, who is declawed and he's 13 and has some arthritis um, as a result of it. Um, so it, it is an actual amputation of the toes. So that's something to keep in mind. It's not just a trimming of the nail, it's actually removing the first knuckle. So if you can imagine having all of your knuckles of your first, of your toes and your fingers cut off, it can be painful immediately and then also in the long term can cause um, arthritis and discomfort as well as behavior issues. You know, we're getting a little bit scratched here, but a simple nail trim can help with that. Um, if declawed cats feel threatened, they can often bite instead. So we don't mm -hmm. want to much rather have a nail trim every once in a while than have a kitty that's scared and wanting to bite us. So. And is a nail trim, is that something you can do at home with a Dremel or is that what you have to get that professionally done? No, it's it, especially with kittens this young, it's really easy to get them started. We spay, we do them at spay and neuter, but it's been about a week and they're growing like weeds. So they kind of grew out already. Um, and so you can get them used to getting it done regularly and it becomes a really simple process, You know, giving them treats just like you would reward a dog for good behavior. Um, and once you get him used to it, it can be a really simple process at home. Ginger is so active. <laughs> oh, he's a goofy. goofy is kitten. he the spotlight of the siblings? I think so. <laughs> him and Billy are kind of the goofballs, but they're all, when we brought them here today, they all just ran right to the front of the cage wanting to come with. So they wanted to come see you guys as well. <laughs> and how many do, we, do you have? So total? For, for oh, the... To, there are four kittens in this group. Um, so we've got Ginger, um, Pearl, Billy, and Coco Bear. Oh yeah. my goodness. <laughs> so if you're available to have one or all, please mm -hmm. take a look at the screen and you'll see the number to the Hinsdale Humane Society. If you're interested in adopting one, one or many mm -hmm. of these amazing animals that you're seeing today, please don't hesitate to log into their website or call the number. We're looking forward to seeing you on the next um, break so we'll see what animals will be back when you return so thank you for joining us but stick around hi welcome back to pet pals we are with the hinsdale humane society and the director of medicine is here showing us benny yeah this is benny he is 13 years old hi benny he's very handsome you'll have to get a close-up of his beautiful green eyes um, but he is from chicago animal care and control he is a senior cat that was brought in as a stray. Um, so it, our age estimate is actually based on his microchip that he had implanted. Um, so his owner was not able to come get him, um, but we were able to accept him into our program as part of our transfer agreement with Chicago Animal Control. And they actually informed us he had a mass on his shoulder and wanted to make sure that we could take care of that. They're always really great about letting us know you know, what we might be getting into when we accept an animal from them. Um, but we were more than happy to, to take him and get it evaluated. So 
We, I actually removed the mass a few weeks ago now, um, and it was actually benign cysts, so it was the best possible news. That's um, great. Nothing to be worried about. It was just kind of not very pretty. Mostly. Sure, and sure. Anytime we have a mass, we want to make sure we know what it is and can tell the adopters that he's got a clear, clean bill of health. So. Now in our last <laughs> segment, we talked about declawing and the importance of leaving the um, the claws yeah. on. And so, but you said that he came declawed already. He did, yes. Um, and when I touch his front paws, he's pretty uncomfortable. Um, so especially 13 years ago, we didn't have laser techniques with surgery as much. Um, it was more just used with cutting, simple cutting of that joint. So um, they can lead to arthritis and especially since he's a little bit of a, a portly boy, um, it can be a little bit uncomfortable for him to be having all his weight on those arthritic feet. So, but he's a good boy. He, he tolerates everything really well. You can just tell that he would have been happier having his claws. Is there any specific advice that you would give to someone adopting an older cat versus if they were to come in for a kitten? So we actually would recommend, just like any cat, once they get to a certain age, you wanna make sure you're doing um, yearly blood work making sure that they're healthy and that all their organ function is good. We actually did that with Benny when he came in and he has, a, again, a clean bill of health with the mass and also with his lab work being perfectly normal. So we were really happy about that. Um, big things with cats when they get older, you wanna watch for thyroid disease, diabetes, and kidney disease. So we wanna make sure we get that kind of yearly lab work done to make sure that we are catching things early if they do develop. Well, if you're interested in adopting Benny or any of the animals that you have seen so far, please take a look at the Hinsdale Humane Society website. And don't forget to take, you can even call them on the screen. As you can see on the screen, you'll see their phone number. Um, so please stay tuned and we'll be right back. Well, we can't thank you enough, Dr. Tverdek, for being here. Dr. Kristen is known by all of her patients and clients at the Hinsdale Humane Society and we're so glad that you're here and you brought the animals and we do hope at home if you are able to take a look at the Hinsdale Humane Society website and make that phone call and go on in and adopt an animal. I'm Patty Sarcady. We hope you enjoyed the show.